You're listening to the Stewart Media and Entertainment Network, home of the number one sports talk show on the planet, The Doug Stewart Show. This is a revolution in radio, the realest, trillest sports talk show in America, The Doug Stewart Show. Broadcasting live Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to noon Eastern Time, exclusively on the Stewart Media and Entertainment Network. This is sports talk for the people. Follow Stewart Media and Entertainment right now on Facebook to stay connected and locked in for upcoming events like the Couples and Cocktail Series, viewing parties, and much, much more. Up next, get ready to ride raw with the Doug Stewart Show. This is Sports Talk with Hot Sauce, Texas P. Hot Sauce, the Doug Stewart Show. Exclusively on the Stewart Media and Entertainment Network. Yeah! At Ticket Liquidator, we believe you should have access to the experiences you want to be a part of. Since 2003, Ticket Liquidator has been connecting buyers and sellers with the most sought-after and often sold-out events across the country. Ticket Liquidator's nationwide network gives you access to one of the largest online inventories of sports, theater, and concert tickets, with prices lower than most companies in other markets. And our security policies are solid, so you can buy with absolute confidence. More tickets, better service, and lower prices, so you can witness the best entertainment, culture, and sports events worldwide. At Ticket Liquidator, we know that seeing a legend bring down the house or watching your team win the championship is about more than a ticket. It's about being there. For all your sports and entertainment ticket needs, call us at 855-638-3034. Again, that's 855-638-3034. Fantasy sports fans are winning huge cash prizes every day at DraftKings.com, America's favorite place to play daily fantasy sports. Daily fantasy means no season-long commitments. Play whenever you want. Just pick your sport and draft your team. It's like a new season every time you play, so you're never stuck with the same players. Last year, $300 million were won at DraftKings.com, and you could be next to win big. Go to DraftKings.com now and enter promo code STU to play for free. That's Stu for free entry now at DraftKings.com. Also, if you use promo code Stu, DraftKings will match your initial deposit up to $600. Deposit $600, play with $1,200. DraftKings.com, promo code Stu. You will not be able to lose yourself on Skag and skip out for beer during commercials because the revolution will not be televised. Do you want that real sports talk? Unfiltered, unsanitized? Well, you have found it. This is a revolution in radio. The realest, trillest sports talk show in America. The Doug Stewart Show. This is sports talk for the people. Yeah! What's happening? Welcome to the Doug Stewart Show, man. This is a throwback Thursday. And oh boy, a lot of stuff we got to get into today. But you know what we got to do? We got to bring it back. (laughs) We got to bring it back. Oh boy, I killed me. Yeah, May 21st, 2015. This is the Doug Stewart Show. The realest, trillest. Most unfiltered sports talk show in America. Thank you for joining your boy. And uh, once again, a lot of stuff to get in on this Throwback Thursday. Uh, you can hit me up at 404-382-0338. You can also email me at Doug at thedougstewartshow.com. Thank you so much for joining your boy, man, on this day. Shouts out to everybody already in the chat room. What up to all of my Stewies? Let's see who we got in here. Shouts out to my man, said Galloway, OG Dion, Juan Cruz, mm, Ducking and Dodging, Fat Boy McCoon, Lamont Hart, Jonga Brother, That Ninja, Mocha Bella. Shouts out to all of the Stewies. Yes, sir. I numb new. I numb new. All right, so, so obviously we're going to talk some NBA playoffs. We're going to talk some uh, Steph Curry and his children. 
<laughs> We're going to talk about tonight's matchup in the NBA as well. Darrell Rivas is in the news. John Calipari. So there's a lot of things to get into. If you're a new listener to the Doug Stewart Show, man, first of all, welcome and thank you. We've been doing a lot of different new marketing. Uh, this is our eighth month, I think, on air. And... <laughs> We got over 6,000 followers, over 150,000 listens. The show is doing fantastic. Thank you so much for joining me, and trust me on this, man. We have a good time around here. Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m., we do it all week long. We do it like nobody else in America, all right? Once again, real, trio, unfiltered sports talk, guide talk, the best in America and in the world, too, shawty. All right, so, so I mean, most of y'all know my background. I grew up in a little small town in South Carolina, uh, Monk Corner, South Carolina. And just like a lot of you that grew up in the same type of background, same type of situation, you know that, that football means a whole lot to, uh, to middle America. I mean, it means a lot. And I grew up in the same type of setting. I went to Berkeley High School, and, uh, and as a little kid, you know, we always wanted to be a Berkeley stag. And I remember as a seven, or eight year old, nine year old kid going to the game and not really paying attention to the game, uh, but I knew Berkeley stags. And then I played under the bleachers with all my little friends. I'm sure a lot of you can share the same story. And I always wanted to be a Berkeley stag. And my whole life was built around being a Berkeley stag. That was the name of our high school and our mascot, stags. And so with that, you know, you always want to beat your rivalry. And you always fantasize about beating the big team that you, that you played against and that, that had this reputation and that you and your friends, you wanted to beat. You had a team you wanted to beat more so than any other team, okay? And so for me and for my hometown, it was the Somerville Green Wave. And you may have heard that name before because their coach, John McKissick, and I've told this before, this story before. Their head coach, John McKissick, is the all-time winningest high school football coach in America. That's right, the next town over from my little hometown. And so the, the annual rivalry game was against Somerville. And so we rarely beat them, okay? We beat them probably once out of every five years. Uh, my junior year in high school, skip forward to my junior year in high school, we had the number one team in the state. We actually went on to play in the state championship. We had uh, the number one player in America and a guy named Mike Dingo, and we actually beat them my junior year. So here comes my senior year, and, and this is going somewhere. Trust me on this, and you're listening to the Doug Stewart Show. So my senior year, keep in mind, I fantasized in playing this game against Somerville my entire life. So my senior year, we start off the year with only one loss. I think we're like 7-1, and one, maybe 6-1 and one or something like that. And then we line up to take on the Somerville Green Wave. And my whole life I've been thinking about this game. And I was a pretty decent player. Damn good player if you ask me. If you ask a lot of people from my hometown. So I, I was a good player. So my whole life, going back to when I was a little kid, once again, was to play this game and to represent Monk's Corner and beat the hated Somerville Green Wave. And then the kickoff happens, and we kick the ball off to them, and it was a guy named Gabby Palmer. I'll never forget it. And Gabby returns the punt or returns the kick for a touchdown. So, I mean, 10 seconds into the game, uh, we're already down 7 to nothing. And then they kick off to us, and we, we start out on offense. And uh, the first play, uh, our quarterback, Chris Patterson, uh, he throws it right to the other team. He throws it right to Somerville, and it's a pick six. So, within 20 seconds, we are down 14 points. <laughs> and then it gets worse, and we have more turnovers, and we're down 21, and we're down 28. And before I know it, we are getting our ass kicked. Like 35 to nothing, or 35 to 3, or something real, real bad like that. And I remember, like it was yesterday, in the, in the fall of 1987, I look up at the scoreboard and I say to myself, it wasn't supposed to happen like this. <laughs> it wasn't supposed to happen like this. When, when I was a kid, I dreamed about beating this team. And 
We're, we're in the middle of the first quarter. We're down by four touchdowns. All right, just, just roll with me. I'm taking this somewhere. And so, so it, the, the point of that whole story is this, is that sports, more so than anything else, is real. It's not a fantasy. You might romanticize about the Hawks beating the Cleveland Cavaliers and what they're going to do. And then before you know it, LeBron James has 31 points. And before you realize what's going on, <laughs> I mean, before you even realize what's going on, and uh, you know, is ATL Ho and, and why not the Hawks? Uh, ATL Ho, this, that, and the other. Before you know it, G.R. Smith. Uh, done shot eight three pointers on your ass. And this isn't a fairy tale, man. LeBron James is a real human being. I mean, you can actually go touch LeBron James. You can go touch him and feel and, and, and realize that this isn't no fairy tale. That, 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 that you need to stop romanticizing. And sure, sure, the Atlanta Hawks, man. This is just one game, and there, a lot of things can happen. But once again, before you know it, LeBron has 31. J.R. Smith shot eight three-pointers on you. Our best defender, Damari Carroll, uh, might be done for the season with an ACL. And then you harken back, you remember that we don't have Tybo Cephalosha. He got beat up in a, in, a, in, a, in a fight with the New York police a couple of weeks ago. And, 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 and this is real. And yes. The Hawks beat the Cavaliers five out of the last six times. But, I mean, this is real right now. This is real right now. And LeBron James just passed Michael Jordan for most 30-point games, five rebounds, five assists games in the history of the NBA. And, oh, yeah, this ninja probably got like five or six more good years in him. I mean, this is real. And this isn't a fairy tale, Jack. And LeBron and J.R. Smith. A bitch slapping Hawks. <sighs> and and it really just hit me last night, man. Just like it hit me back in 87 that that Somerville was just bigger, stronger, much faster. I mean, they, they were damn near the six million dollar men of high school football. I mean, these jokers showed up on a chartered bus. They had 100 players. And the same thing last night with LeBron James. He's just bigger. He's just stronger. He's just faster, man. And the Hawks had a great year. The number one seed in the East. Fantastic things. The best year of this organization's history. And just like that, they lose home court advantage. Just like that, they piss away home court advantage. You know why? Because sports... Is the great equalizer and it's real, it's tangible. ATL ho, ATL ho, ATL ho. And last night it didn't mean nothing. I'm not giving up hope. I got faith. But last night it just dawned on me and all of the ATL ho talk and the why not the Hawks and this, that, and the other. Uh, we have to play against LeBron James. <laughs> We have to play against the Somerville Green Wave of the NBA. And I just realized it last night. Hawks had all of the opportunities in the world. And they pissed it away, man. It's not over. It's not over, man. But I just realized last night that this is going to be a little bit harder than I thought. <laughs> hey, when we get back from the break, man, we'll jump into today's show. Uh, or uh, read your chat. We do birthdays. We have a lot of fun, man. Let's talk some NBA playoffs. Let's talk Hawks. Let's talk about what went wrong last night. Let's do it on the Doug Stewart Show. Don't go away. Fantasy sports fans are winning huge cash prizes every day at DraftKings.com. America's favorite place to play daily fantasy sports. Daily fantasy means no season-long commitments. Play whenever you want. Just pick your sport and draft your team. It's like a new season every time you play. So, you're never stuck with the same players. Last year, $300 million were won at DraftKings.com, and you could be next to win big. Go to DraftKings.com now and enter promo code STEW 
to play for free. That's Stu for free entry now at DraftKings.com. Also, if you use promo code Stu, DraftKings will match your initial deposit up to $600. Deposit $600, play with $1,200. DraftKings.com, promo code Stu. The The Doug Doug Stewart Stewart Show. Show. The place where the real players play. We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service. The The Doug Doug Stewart Stewart Show. Show. That's a brand name. Like Pepsi, that's a brand name. I stand behind it. I guarantee it. The The Doug Doug Stewart Stewart Show. Show. If you ain't stewing, what the hell are you doing? Yeah! What is 911 Tax Relief? It's a tax relief company that can help you reduce or remove your IRS or state tax debt. They'll help stop bank levies and wage garnishments by implementing offers and compromise or penalty abatements. 911 Tax Relief is a tax relief company, but they're different from the others. Their experts are licensed and role tax agents, and they also have more than 12 years' experience helping people solve their tax problems. They're a tax relief company that understands how the IRS works, and they'll also put that knowledge to work for you. So, they can get you the best possible settlement or solution to your tax problems. Highly rated by the Better the Business Bureau, and they've helped thousands of people solve their tax problems. So, don't play around. Click on their link on my website and let 911 Tax Relief help you in your situation with Uncle Sam. If you're not stewing, what in the hell are you doing? This is the Doug Stewart Show. And uh, thanks for joining your boy. This is a uh, throwback Thursday. And oh my gosh. My, my gosh. Uh, incredible. Hawks go down 97 to 89. They made a last second push to try to win this game, but they just couldn't make shots. And let me say this. Uh, let me say this. Uh, talking about this game last night. And let me let me remember Jeff T. But let me let me do this quickly. And you're listening to the Doug Stewart Show. This segment is brought to you by System Five Electronics. They're proud to offer my listeners in the Atlanta area the most affordable home security monitoring systems, featuring smart solutions for your busy lifestyle for as little as sixteen fifty per month. All right. They've been in business for over twenty five years. Uh, once they install your security system, you own it for life. They won't come and pull it off your wall if for some reason you want to leave. But you won't want to leave because they take care of me and my listeners. All right? Um, they've been around for over 25 years. So give them a call at uh, 404-756-0736. Again, that's 404-756-0736. Uh, or you can just check them out online. Just just you know, open a new window on your computer right now and check out System5ElectronicsInc.com. And make sure you tell them that the Doug Stewart Show sent you. Um, about that game last night, and I don't know if anyone said it. And now let me make sure and preface what I say before um, I say it. Um, I'm not saying that this happened. I am not saying that this happened, okay? But if I didn't know any better, man, I would think Jeff Teague was point shaving last night. <laughs> I mean, that's all I'm saying. If I didn't know any better, and I know better, and I know this isn't the case, once again, I'm trying to make sure that nobody doesn't get this, this, this twisted. I'm not saying this happened. I'm not. But what I'm saying is, if I didn't know better, I think Jeff, Twe- Jeff Teague was, uh, was point shaving last night in that last five, six minutes. Jeff Teague, and he had a fantastic game. What did he have? 27 points. Played fantastic. But at the end, he was not aggressive. He didn't even try to shoot three-pointers. He, whenever he went to the basket, he missed bunnies. Uh, he was all out of sorts, turning the ball over. Like, I don't know what happened. Like, the Jeff Teague that played fantastic in the first half and much of the third quarter, in the last five minutes of that game, it's like he forgot how to play basketball. Did y'all notice that? Or am I the only one? Is that just a me thing? It looked like in the last five minutes of that game, he didn't know what the hell he was doing. And it looked like it was almost purposeful (laughs) because you couldn't believe what you were watching. And once again, I'm not saying that happened. I'm not accusing Jeff Teague of anything. I'm just trying to make the point that in the last five minutes of that game, it was very, very strange. Yeah, and the Cleveland Cavaliers do win last night, 97-89. to 
What are your thoughts on it? 404-382-0338. You can also email me at Doug at the Doug Uh, What do you say about LeBron James, man? 31 points, man. Just fantastic. And uh, J.R. Smith. When you get J.R. Smith on a roll like that, and you and if you remember a couple of times uh, in, last night when him shooting the ball, like he just threw it up like he was playing horse. And those were heat checks. Like he was so hot. That he had, he just had to see. All right, if I take this shot here, well, let's go in. <laughs> you know, he was kind of like testing himself. Like he was so hot that the Hawks didn't have a chance, man. Once again, they made a great effort at the end to come back and try to win this thing, but it was a little bit too little, too late. Um, and the big story, obviously, coming out of this game is Damari Carroll, and I haven't heard uh, his status yet as far as going forward. But to me. And once again, I hate to even speak these things into existence, and I hope not. But it looked like, I don't even want to use the medical term. You know what the medical term is. It looks like that, all right? The tongue speaks like life or death, so I'm not going to say that. But his leg buckled in a way that I've seen before, and I've seen it with me, okay, when I tore that particular uh, uh, part of my body when I played uh, in college uh, some 25 years ago. So it doesn't look good. He's going to do an MRI today. We'll see what happens. Pray for the best. And Kent Bazemore came in last night. I like Bazemore. I really do like him. It seems like he's streaky too at times. Long, real long defender, long ass arms. Pay attention to his arms. His arms, arms damn near drag the ground. So he's a good defensive player. But in effect, he's the third best defensive player that this team had. And it kind of highlighted last night. And I had really forgot about it or didn't think about it for the last couple of weeks, and you're listening to the Doug Stewart Show, that we had already lost Tybo Cephalosha to that foolishness that happened in New York. And he was the number one defensive player. And then you could say Damari Carroll was the second best. And I guess Kent Bazemore uh, is your third best defender and somebody that you're going to try to shot out there on LeBron James. But it's just, it's not even a contest, man. Even with Damari Carroll, it's just too light in the ass to guard LeBron James. And I know it's a, it's a village type thing. Like one person can't do it or be expected to do it. Uh, I guess you're going to see a little bit more of Mike Scott now. But last night, it's just one game. Well, let me say that. And you're listening to the Doug Stewart Show. It's just one game. And, you know, we've seen what happen, happens in the NBA um, by already by, by, by uh, counting somebody out. You saw what happened with the Houston Rockets coming back in their series from three games to one and beating the L.A. Clippers. So it can happen. But I'm just saying it's going to be tough, man. It's going to be real, real tough. Because that boy LeBron James, he's the real deal, Jack. (laughs) I mean, he is the real deal. Uh, And and I know for a lot of you listening to me, it sounds kind of strange for you to hear me give kudos to LeBron James. Well, if you're just tuning in for the first time or recently, uh, ever since LeBron went back to Cleveland, I ain't affected for giving him. I've been the bigger man, and I had a real problem with LeBron James. Called him out for many, many years for that crap that he pulled and going down to Miami. I think that he realizes he made a mistake, that it was wrong, that he should have had more belief in himself, and so he went back to Cleveland. So I forgot about uh, uh, forgiven and forgotten about all of that Cleveland stuff, and I'm back to the Doug Stewart before he went to Miami which always acknowledge that he's one of the best players or is going to go down as one of the best players in NBA history. So that's where we're at right now with LeBron James. And that kid's pretty good. And I guess we shouldn't be calling him kid anymore. He's been in the league ever since he was in high school. But that young man, he's about 30 years old right now, is pretty damn good. It's as simple as that. I don't know what the Hawks are going to do now, man. Like, I'm, I'm trying to think of, you know, how they can turn this thing around. And you're listening to the Doug Stewart Show. They had a home game last night. In relative terms, they were more healthier. They were, they were healthier than the Cavaliers. And, and you actually saw last night Kyrie Irving, uh, his knee kind of give way on him a little bit. So that's going to be a storyline going forward. Um, you had the emotion of this organization, this team being in the Eastern Conference Finals. Uh, for the first time in the team's history. Uh, it was a packed house. It was a packed house, and Atlanta fans always get a lot of grief 
for not being great fans, this, that, and the other. It was a packed house. You give us a good product, we'll show up. I actually called my ticket guy, um, my folks at uh, Ticket Liquidator, and the cheapest prices on tickets in the 300 section, the top level section, were going for like 200 bucks. So I wasn't going to do that. I made a couple more calls and still wasn't going to do that. Same thing. So uh, Floyd Mayweather shows up with his entourage. He's courtside. And it's a lot of money to go see the Hawks. So I couldn't do it last night. So I watched the game from my house. <laughs> I wanted to go and support in person. But I was like, nah, that's too much of a damn headache. And it costs too much. It costs too much. And so it was a great atmosphere. It was an opportune time for the Hawks to win game one of this series. And just like that, uh, home court is gone. The home court is gone. They worked so hard to get this year. It's gone just like that. Poof. (laughs) Like a puff of smoke. It's gone. What are your thoughts on the game last night? 404-382-0338. You can also email me at Doug at the Doug Stewart Show dot com. Um, real, real tough night to watch, man. And at one time, I think they were up. The Cavs were up by like 19 points. And somehow the, the Hawks kept fighting. They got a lot of heart. They kept chipping away and chipping away and chipping away. And uh, it just wasn't enough. A little bit too little too late as they do go down last night in game one. Let me read some of your chat messages on Spreaker.com. The way to be totally interactive on Spreaker is follow me on Spreaker.com, the Doug Stewart Show, and then click on the little chat bubble and be totally interactive. I read a lot of chat. It's your show, too. I mean, I'm just the point, man. But y'all are my co-hosts. And so I really take from what you're saying and uh, make this show totally interactive. For Montana Jones, Doug, I don't want to hear about your mouth. Get to that ass whipping last night. (laughs) Jungle Brother. Why we didn't hear the story yesterday, Max Jones III, sweep. I'm not going to say sweep. I just, I just and you can tell uh, my heart is hurt today. <laughs> my feelings are hurt today. Uh, I'm not going to say sweep. Anything's possible, but I'm not going to say sweep. No way that happens. Hawks actually still got a chance to win this series. How about that? How about that, okay? Let's show some optimism here. It's not all doom and gloom. It's not. It doesn't look good, but it's not all doom and gloom. From 9 on the Rhino, Hawks are playing possum. (laughs) I hope so. From Texas Tide, Cavs stole 190, 90H, haha, whatever that means. Uh, Shouts out to you, Texas Tide. J-Rob, LeBron was laughing at Millsop guarding him at half court. Yeah, that that was hurtful too. (laughs) So at the end of the game, and this was right during the, the run that the Hawks made to try to get back into the game and, You know, uh, obviously, Damari Carroll had just gone out. If you didn't see the game, there's a reason why I'm telling you this. And so Paul Millsap's guarding LeBron. He's trying to play him tight. And LeBron is literally laughing at dude. LeBron's, like, doing all of this herky-jerky stuff. Like, he's on the playground or whatever. Like, he's, like, and one or whatever. And it was very disrespectful to, uh, to Paul Millsap. But I guess LeBron was just trying to make a point. Like, you can't guard me, man. You cannot guard me. And it was real embarrassing, really. Miss Mocha Bella, Doug, your Hawks, back to life, back to reality. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's just one game, though. It's just one game. Now, if they lose game two and game three, then I will have to roll out soul to soul on their ass. Back to life, back to reality. But we aren't at that point yet. We aren't at that point yet. Max Jones III, yeah, ATL ho for sure. LeBron and J.R. Smith had the Hawks on the block getting their trick money up. Laughing my ass off. That ninja, the refs, Eddie Long, the Hawks. Some bad calls last night, too. Some horrible calls last night. Horrible phantom calls. There were some phantom calls last night in this game. Gary joined excuses, excuses. We don't need them. Adapt and overcome Hawks. That's what they got to do. They got to adapt. And once again, it's not over. I haven't lost faith, but last night was not a good indicator. (laughs) <laughs> it definitely was not a good indicator. All right, we get back from the break, man. Speaking of the NBA playoffs, a little controversy from the Golden State game the other night with Steph Curry's daughter. I'm sure you've heard about this. I'm going to give you my thoughts, man. I'm going to give you my thoughts on it when we get back. And I also read a lot of your chat. We'll also do birthdays. Don't go away. This is the Doug Stewart Show.
System 5 Electronics is proud to offer my listeners in the Atlanta area the most affordable home security monitoring systems, featuring smart solutions for your busy lifestyle for as low as $16.50 per month. Here's just a few reasons to choose System 5. Not only is their monitoring station located here in Atlanta, but they also install the most advanced, up-to-date alarm systems where you can access cameras, lights, door locks, thermostats, and other devices remotely with your smartphone. 24-7 technical support plus the lowest service call fees in the business. And check this. You own your security alarm system once it's installed. Not only have they been around for almost 25 years, but their customer service is excellent. And you get direct access to the owner, Mr. Macy O'Brown, to resolve any issues with your alarm system. Click on the banner on the Doug Stewart Show website or app for more details or give them a call at 404-756-0736. Again, that's 404-756-0736. And make sure and tell them the Doug Stewart Show sent you. Yeah. At Ticket Liquidator, we believe you should have access to the experiences you want to be a part of. Since 2003, Ticket Liquidator has been connecting buyers and sellers with the most sought-after and often sold-out events across the country. Ticket Liquidator's nationwide network gives you access to one of the largest online inventories of sports, theater, and concert tickets with prices lower than most companies in other markets. And our security policies are solid so you can buy with absolute confidence. More tickets, better service, and lower prices, so you can witness the best entertainment, culture, and sports events worldwide. At Ticket Liquidator, we know that seeing a legend bring down the house or watching your team win the championship is about more than a ticket. It's about being there. For all your sports and entertainment ticket needs, call us at 855 638 3034. Again, that's 855 638 3034. National Debt Relief is one of the country's largest and most reputable debt settlement companies, made up of energetic individuals who are passionate about helping thousands of Americans with debt relief. Most importantly, we're all about helping our customers through a tough financial time in their lives with education and individual customer service. We're dedicated to helping individuals and families rid their lives of burdensome debt specializing in debt settlement, and they've also negotiated settlements for thousands of creditor and collection accounts. Providing clients with both expertise and proven results, this means helping customers in time of hardship to get out of debt with the least possible cost. It can also mean conducting financial consultations, educating the customer, and recommending the appropriate solution. Core services offer debt settlement as an alternative, I repeat, alternative to bankruptcy credit counseling, and debt consolidation. National Debt Relief is your number one advocate group to help you reestablish financial stability as quickly as possible. So give us a call at 844-828-4975. Again, that's 844-828-4975 and work it out. Welcome back to the Doug Stewart Show. Uh, if he would have lived, today would have been Biggie Small's birthday. R.I.P. to the great B.I.G., a.k.a. Christopher Wallace. Uh, we'll do some birthdays here in a second. The number is 404-382-0338. You can also email me at Doug at the Doug Stewart Show.com. And this is a throwback Thursday. All right, we're going to talk about Steph Curry and his daughter in a second. Um, but let me quickly do these birthdays. We do birthdays every single day, Monday through Friday, on the Doug Stewart Show. I mean, we celebrate people's birth. I mean, that's a great thing, right? Uh, shouts out to the great Mr. T. He turned 63 years old today. His real name was Lawrence Terod. Um. All right, so if you're young, you may not remember this, and a lot of you older cats may not even remember this, but I do because I was, you know, a TV addict, and I loved TV as a kid growing up in the 70s. Do you remember how Mr. T actually came to fame? It wasn't from the A-team. Like, he was discovered. There was this show on TV. It was like a tough man competition or a bouncer competition or something. It was kind of like reality TV, and basically they had these big muscle-bound tough guys 
that would do like an obstacle course type thing, or they did something that tough guys would do. And it's hard to explain. It was like a competition amongst tough guys. And Mr. T was discovered on that show. And I should have pulled up the name of that show. Maybe Tree can look for it for me. And the whole concept was tough guys, uh, real street tough guys battling against each other. And that's where Mr. T was uh, was discovered at and then went on to, to Hollywood fame, being on the A-Team, one of the most recognizable characters in TV history. Happy birthday to the great Mr. T. I'm going to guess that show was like 78, 79, and I'm sure Tree will, will do the history on it. Uh, the etymology on it and find out the, uh, exactly the details on that TV show. But that's where, where Mr. T actually got his fame and where he was uh, recognized at. Uh, Ronald Isley turned 74 years old today. Happy birthday to Mr. Big. Uh, love that R. Kelly, Mr. Big thing they got going on. <laughs> ah, so he's 74 years old. Uh, Ricky Williams, 38 years old, crazy-ass Ricky Williams, uh, likes his weed, Ricky Williams. Happy birthday to him. He's 38. <laughs> Former NFL running back, became the 27th player in league history to rush for over 10,000 yards. Bobby Cox's birthday is today. He's 74 years old, a uh, longtime Atlanta Braves manager. And as I mentioned, Christopher Wallace, a.k.a. Biggie Smalls, a.k.a. the Notorious B.I.G., a.k.a. the second greatest rapper in the history of rap, uh, was born on this day in 1972. Happy, you know, I guess you can't say happy birthday, but R.I.P. And if, you know, happy birthday and, uh, and uh, the, for, the for forever laughter life to uh, afterlife to uh, Christopher Wallace. He would have. He would have been, what, 43? I think my math is correct on that. He would have been 43 years old today. That's crazy. That's crazy. 404-382. Oh, yeah, one more birthday. Shouts out to my man Scotty, man, who turns 47 years old today in the chat room. Happy birthday, Scotty. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy <laughs> birthday all right by now she would already jumped in but happy birthday scotty what 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 no <laughs> so tree did you find that information for me yet about mr t uh yeah okay it's, what's uh, the deal what's the deal what, what was it called and what year was it oh my gosh i just had it it's like it was an nbc america america's now i gotta look I had it up. America's all right, all right. Toughest Bouncer. Okay, that's what it was called. America's Toughest Bouncer. And it was, uh, it first aired as a, it's called the Sunday Games on NBC. Okay. Under the contest of America's Toughest Bouncer. Mm -hmm. uh, and it included throwing a 150 pound stunt man. Uh huh. Breaking through a four inch wooden door. <laughs> You're right. It was like an obstacle course. Like they come in, it was in a bar. I think it was in a bar. And I remember this. And now keep in mind, I was like eight, nine years old, depending on what year that it premiered. Uh, they like ran through doors. They like picked up these dummies. And I guess that's what you were talking about a second ago. They ran with a dummy, you know, kind of like fireman's carry a guy um, that was hurt or whatever. Um, you know, they did all types of things. They even, maybe even punched a punching bag. To see how much force that they exerted in hitting a punching bag. They did all of this little like obstacle course type thing against each other. And Mr. T was like the best ever. <laughs> he was balling out as a bodyguard. He was uh, right. Diana he was a, Ross's he was bodyguard. A, he was a real life bodyguard before he Michael was discovered Jackson. and put on the show. Exactly. He was he used to charge three thousand dollars a day yeah. for, to bodyguard. Mr. T is a real deal. Like Mr. T. Uh, it, it, like, like he's he's the rampage of yesteryear. You know, rampage is right. <laughs> and rampage is funny. Rampage, the UFC wrestler, actually played B. A. Baracus in the A Team movie. Um, but yeah, they're the same dude. Except when Mr. T was like 1978, and Rampage is is today. He's today's Mr. T. Uh, find out for me the year that I'm going to guess about 78, 79. 404 382 0338 is the number to the show. I'm sure you've heard the little controversy, and I want to get your thoughts on this too in the chat room on Spreaker.com. 
I'm sure you've heard the little controversy about Steph Curry having his daughter Riley at the post-game press conference the other night. Brian Windhorse, which in effect is the LeBron James reporter. That's no lie either. I'm not exaggerating on that. Brian Windhorse now with ESPN. I think his title now is he covers basketball. But if you don't know the story on Brian Windhorse, and I'm kind of deviating from the point here uh, just for a second. Brian Windhorse actually grew up in Akron, Ohio. Uh, he's a journalism major or whatever. Um, and he actually covered LeBron James. He was the beat writer um, for the Miami Heat or for the Cleveland Cavaliers a little bit later. But in high school, he covered LeBron James in high school. And he's actually from Akron, Ohio. Okay, and then so when LeBron got drafted by the Cavaliers, he actually covered the Cavaliers for the newspaper there in the Cleveland area. I think it's the Cleveland Plain Deal or whatever. So then when LeBron uh, left Cleveland and went to Miami, Brian Windhorse was hired by ESPN to, in effect, follow this ninja. <laughs> so LeBron went to Miami, then Brian Windhorse moved to Miami. And I believe... Since LeBron's gone back to Cleveland, uh, I believe that Windhorse still is the guy that specifically his job, in effect, long story short, is he covers LeBron James. <laughs> hey, that's what he does. And I think they say that, you know, he's a basketball analyst now. But his whole career is revolved around following LeBron James. So the other night, Riley Curry uh, comes out to the postgame press conference with her dad, Steph Curry, and she acts like a kid. I mean, okay, she's a little girl, and she acts like a little girl would act. And Brian Windhorst just went on this rampage saying that they need to stop this, that the NBA needs to stop letting these kids come to these press conferences with, uh, with their fathers that play basketball. And you've seen Chris Paul do this. You've seen athletes do this for a long, long time. And I don't know why they choose particular nights to do it or not. I'm sure a lot of it's got to do with marketing and branding. I mean, you're, you're, you're a good dad. You got your daughter out there. You got your kid out there. Uh, so, I mean, what? That's a good thing, right? You would think. And so, uh, Windhorse and all these other lame Larrys and, and media are saying that the NBA should stop these players from having their kids come out there to these press conferences. <sighs> and, and, and you're listening to the Ducks Show. Yes, yes, Tree? Because it's not negative enough. And you said right. it the other day. Right. Negativity sells. Negative. If the, if the ninjas don't have their kids, <laughs> then they want to talk about, well, they ain't a good dad and they're not in their life. That is what sells. Right. Exactly. And that's, and that's pretty much the point I wanted to make. And you're listening to the Doug Stewart Show. You damned if you do. You damned if you don't. Okay. So they're not reporting. They're not reporting on a, a shooting in a nightclub or or some athlete getting in trouble or getting busted with some weed. And, you know, you're not talking about that. So you're getting mad about these guys bringing their kids out, sharing a special moment with their kids? Now, listen, I understand that they have a job to do. I understand they have a job to do. I understand that. But get over yourself, man. Get over yourself. This ain't about you and, and, the, and the comment made by Wind Horses. We have a deadline. We have a job to do. Yeah, that's you. You're a media guy. So what? It's not about you. It's not about you. Same thing with referees. They almost try to make themselves part of the action. Man, it ain't about you. We don't care that you got a deadline to meet. The NBA shouldn't care about that. We, we, and and, and that, that wasn't even the case the other night because this was an early game technically for Golden State. So I don't understand where that whole argument comes from. It's not about you, man. I mean, you damned if you do, you damned if you don't. Try to pick on something. And listen, once again, I get it. I understand that you're trying to do a job and you're trying to get this these quotes from these players, this, that, and the other. But it's not even that serious. You could have gone about this a whole different way than making a hissy fit about this and tweeting it shouldn't, they shouldn't do this, that, and the other. Because you make yourself look like an a-hole. You make yourself look like a, uh, an a-hole. It's as simple as that. And I'm just shocked that they actually uh, made this big of a story of this. I'm shocked because, once again, it makes you look bad. It makes you look like that you are unsensitive to kids. And it also makes you look like that you have uh, some type of axe to grind with players, that you're petty. I mean, that's petty. 
eh, okay, if you got a problem with it, maybe you go and you talk to David Stern behind closed doors, eh, or not David Stern, the new commissioner of the NBA, uh, what's the name, Adam Silverstein, uh, Silverstein, and you say, you know, eh, can we do something this? Can you just, uh, you know, make some type of rule that helps us out in our situation with, uh, with our jobs being journalists? I don't know, but you don't go public and, in effect, throw shade on the kids. Who throws shade on the kids? <laughs> that was unbelievable to me. That was unbelievable to me that this man actually came out of his mouth and, in effect, saying that they should ban kids. I mean, who in the history of the world has won an argument against a kid? What grown-ass man in effect, is on the other side of children. It doesn't happen. And then I read Skip Bayless is all on board. He's with the guy, Brian Windhorse. And I'm like, that's typical Skip. I mean, that doesn't really surprise me. But that really surprised me, this Windhorse guy just, uh, just made it public about his stance against having kids at the press conference. Yeah, I mean, what? I mean, that's a good thing. I mean, that helps your image, right? Doesn't that help your branding, your image, even if you're doing it on purpose or not? You love your kids. You're, 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 you're a loving father. You're a good father. What? Get out of here with that. GTFOH. <laughs> Don't go away. Keep it locked. When we get back, I'm going to read more of your chat. That's all I'm going to do. This is the Doug Stewart Show. You've been thinking about starting that online store, right? And you do know e-commerce makes billions a year. That's right. I said billions with a B, okay? A B. Well, just do it and do it right with my friends at AmeriCommerce. AmeriCommerce is an easy-to-use tool to sell anything online on Facebook and through mobile phones. Over 100,000 merchants and website owners have chosen AmeriCommerce to handle their stores and customers. They have the most in-depth features in the industry, which include multiple storefronts, website management for one console, a Facebook shopping application, a mobilized, optimized website, and much more. Don't let eBay, Amazon, and Zappos get all the money. Get your piece of the pie, too. Click on their banner link on the DougStewartShow.com or the app link for more details. First of all, thank you for listening to the Doug Stewart Show. Now, if you've been listening for a while, you know that we've grown exponentially over the first couple of months. Whether that's listens, whether that's followers, we're blowing up and you could be a part of it. If you have a company out there and you like to promote on the Doug Stewart Show, we'd love to partner with you. Here's what you do. Email me at Doug at the Doug Stewart Show.com. Once again, that's Doug at the Doug Stewart Show.com. Whether that's locally, regionally or nationally we can get the word out what you're talking about is middle-aged dudes that love sports and love exciting sports talk once again email me at doug at the doug stewart show.com that's doug at the doug stewart show.com and we will put you out there all right that's doug at the doug stewart show.com let's do some business yes Fantasy sports fans are winning huge cash prizes every day at DraftKings.com, America's favorite place to play daily fantasy sports. Daily fantasy means no season-long commitments. Play whenever you want. Just pick your sport and draft your team. It's like a new season every time you play, so you're never stuck with the same players. Last year, $300 million were won at DraftKings.com, and you could be next to win big. Go to DraftKings.com now and enter promo code STU to play for free. That's Stu for free entry now at DraftKings.com. Also, if you use promo code Stu, DraftKings will match your initial deposit up to $600. Deposit $600, play with $1,200. DraftKings.com, promo code Stu. The world's heavyweight champion of Sports Talk Radio, this is the Doug Stewart Show. Thank you for joining your folk on this Throwback Thursday. And uh, talking about the NBA playoffs. Do you think the Hawks are dead? And I hate to overreact. It's just one game. But I didn't see good indicators last night. 
Like, and, and, and much of that game last night, it looked like the Hawks didn't even belong on the floor with uh, with the Cleveland Cavaliers. And, yes, they did make a run at the very end. But, I mean, the Cavaliers just controlled that game really from start to finish. Um, then with an explanation point at the very end when the Hawks were, like, within four or five, uh, somehow LeBron James, like, parted the Red Sea like freaking Moses and just went down the middle of the lane for a dunk and kind of like put a little bit more separation between them and the and the Hawks and that was it. I mean, that was the that was the death nail. And uh so it just it didn't look good last night, man. I I could see if they were going back and forth if the Hawks um had a lot of freedom in their spacing and the way they moved on the floor and they moved the ball, but defensively the Cavs were great last night as well, in my opinion. Um uh, now you add on top of it that Damari Carroll injury it just didn't look uh good. Uh, this segment is brought to you by Ticket Liquidator. Since 2003, Ticket Liquidator has been connecting buyers and sellers to give you the opportunity to attend the most sought-after and often sold-out events across the country. The goal is to bring you more tickets, better service, and lower prices so that you can be there to witness the best of the world of entertainment, culture, and sports and what they have to offer. For all your sports and entertainment ticket needs, Call them at 855-638-3034. Once again, that's 855-638-3034. And make sure you tell them that the Doug Stewart Show sent you. I called them last night, last second. And the lowest prices they had were like 200 bucks for the top level. I mean, for nosebleed seats. So it was just a tough ticket to get. Yes, Tree? I'm still upset about this bashing of this little girl <laughs> i mean right, it's, right. I'm, I'm i'm upset about it she's a baby and i just think that it's very suitable that this man needs to be nominated for a bpa oh yes you're right hold on a second let me reach down here grab mm-hmm. my phone. get the pencil you're right i forgot all about that so we are going to nominate brian windhorse brian Windhorse. How do you spell it? Hold on. Oh. F O R D. Period. Brian Windhorse has been nominated for a Boyle Peanuts Award. And if you're new to the show, ask somebody in the chat room, they'll explain it. It's a long story. In effect, it goes to the Buster of the Week, and we do it every Friday. So Brian Windhorse basically scolding. And coming down on kids, on children, like Trick said back in the day, Doug Stewart and the TDSS show, we love the kids. We do. And uh, I don't know where they do that at, (laughs) where a grown-ass man takes on a little kid. And I know he's talking about the whole premise and the job that they have to do. I just think you got to be nominated at least for a Boiled Penis Award, so you have been Mr. Brian Windhorse. Yeah. Who does that? It's almost like, and maybe it's a cultural thing, <laughs> and I might be even digging deeper into this than I probably should. It's almost like a cultural thing. You know, at most black churches, the little kids be running around crazy. They be losing their damn mind. And don't nobody say nothing to the little kids. They're little kids. You know, you know, I mean, that's like an unwritten. You don't get mad at the little kids if you're somebody else. Now, if you're the parent, it's cool. But if you're somebody else, you don't scold someone else's kids. Uh, you don't say anything negative towards someone else's kids. I can hear it right now, the preacher saying, oh, it's just the baby. Let the baby go. Don't worry about the baby. The baby's in the Lord's house. Let the baby go. <laughs> now, Steph, Steph Curry's little daughter was off the chain. She was all under the table. My mother used to say, like, me and my brother used to always be under the pews in church. Uh, we used to be five, six rolls up, crawling. But, they, you know, we kids. Let the babies just be babies. And so I, I like that tree. Um, we're going to nominate Brian Windhorse for calling out a damn little kid. How dare you do that? 404-382-0338 is the number to the show. Let me read some of your chat here from Montana Jones. Uh, why can't it be that the Cavs are just a better team? That might be the case, man. Dollars and cents. Millsap was trying to punk LG, LBJ uh, by being physical. OG Dion, who blaming refs? We lost one game like last series. That's right. It's just one game. I have to temper, you know, all of my comments today. 
It is just one game, and we have seen things happen. Once again, though, last night, I didn't see a lot that lets me believe that the Hawks, after one game, uh, are going to win this series. I mean, I just didn't see a lot of indicators, once again. From uh, J. Rob, James was being guarded by smallish players, even before Carroll got hurt. He took them down to the post. No stopping a hot J.R. Smith. This game wreaked bad matchups all over. I'm not a Cavs fan. I'm just watching. Yeah, that's kind of what I was saying a little bit earlier. Uh, the matchups just really prevailed last night. I mean, it's a horrible, horrible matchup with, with Paul Millsap against LeBron James. It's just horrible. I mean, and Paul Millsap's a good basketball player. I think he even was an all-star this year. But he cannot stay in front of LeBron James. For Paul Millsap to stay in front of LeBron James, he would have to, like, fight him. <laughs> he would have to fight him, okay? Like, like literally, like, hit him in the stomach or punch him in the side of the damn face or something like that to stop this guy. He's just not quick enough. His feet just are not quick enough. So it's a horrible matchup right now for LeBron James. And he's so smart. You know, with a smaller guy, he's just going to take him down on the blocks. With a bigger guy, he'll just shoot over him or he'll run right past him. He knows what to do in all situations, and plus the fact that he's seen everything that you can throw at him ever since he's been in the NBA and he's been to the playoffs every year, and this is his fifth year in the Eastern Conference Finals, maybe the fifth year in a row in the, in the finals period. The guy has seen everything. He's seen everything. So it's just, it's just it wasn't a good look last night. Nine for life. I've said the refs has a hand in all the games. Now it affects the Hawks. It's noticeable. Wow. I remember Nine for Life talking about this a couple of days ago. I do remember that. From Gary Joyner, Steve Holman said the refs may call specifically describing a ref coming from half court to call a blocking call in favor of baby Braun Braun. And they do scream for calls. That's one thing that the Cavaliers do, and LeBron James in particular. They do cry for calls. They do a lot of that. An exorbitant amount of crying for calls, and it looked like it worked last night at least. Nine on the Rhino. The number one problem with the Hawks is none of the players are good at hitting contested shots. Nobody going to let you drive to the rim in the fourth quarter. Um, I haven't really talked about this guy a lot, man, but Dennis Schroeder is that dude. And even last night, he had a lot of difficulty uh, getting to the basket, uh, in which he normally does. But I really think that you're probably going to see more of uh, Dennis Schroeder because it seems like, and, and once again, I don't want to sound like I'm really being critical of Jeff T because he had a great game in relative terms last night. It seems to me that Dennis Schroeder is a better creator. Like he can get to the basket even easier than Jeff Teague. Uh, he's going to be a great player. <laughs> right. Uh, I, I can really see a scenario where Jeff Teague's contract uh, comes up and Dennis Schroeder, uh, his contract comes up, and the Hawks make a decision to move forward, going forward with Dennis Schroeder. And he kind of has that European game, obviously. Uh, he kind of reminds me of Rondo, a, a, a distributor, can get to the basket. He's young as hell. He's got a great upside, man. Maybe you're going to see a little bit more of him in this series against the Cleveland Cavaliers. Uh, maybe Coach Bud feels like that he has to make a couple of changes. And I think after this first game, I think that they will make some changes, and one of them may be more Dennis Schroeder from uh, Cake 3000. Disrespectful ass LeBron James shaking my head, uh, trying to sun Millsap. Disrespectful ass. Oh, it was very disrespectful to Paul Millsap last night. Like LeBron treated Millsap like he was his son, uh, or even worse yet, like he was his bitch. <laughs> and you see the title of today's show, LeBron and Smith bitch slapped the Hawks. Montana Jones, now the haters are blaming the rest. OG Dion, say what you want. Uh, I could care less about anybody. It's ATL Ho. Yeah, I said, I'm saying with you. ATL Ho, ATL Ho, ATL Ho. From Nine for Life, J.R. Smith will shoot you in and out of a game. Yeah, he was hot last night. Some nights he actually shoots you out of games. So hopefully that's the case going forward in this series against the Atlanta Hawks. Gerald, but one thing I will say to inspire the Hawks as a Knicks fan, I've watched JR do this many times. You won't be able to find JR for about three to four games. With Kyrie hurt, the Hawks are going to have to make it happen, and I mean now. If they go down 0 2 going to Cleveland, it's going to be rough. It's a wrap. I agree with that. Yeah, you can't think that JR Smith is going to have back to back nights like that. He's a fantastic streak shooter. 
and he's just that, a streak shooter. You can't expect for him to have another outing like he did in the next game, in game two like he did in game one. You just cannot expect that. All right, when we get back from the break, man, more of your chat. I want to talk a little bit about Darrell Revis. He's in the news. And uh, all your phone calls and all what we do here on the Doug Stewart Show, the realest show in America. Do not go away. Yeah. At Ticket Liquidator, we believe you should have access to the experiences you want to be a part of. Since 2003, Ticket Liquidator has been connecting buyers and sellers with the most sought-after and often sold-out events across the country. Ticket Liquidator's nationwide network gives you access to one of the largest online inventories of sports, theater, and concert tickets, with prices lower than most companies in other markets. And our security policies are solid so you can buy with absolute confidence. More tickets, better service, and lower prices, so you can witness the best entertainment, culture, and sports events worldwide. At Ticket Liquidator, we know that seeing a legend bring down the house or watching your team win the championship is about more than a ticket. It's about being there. For all your sports and entertainment ticket needs, call us at 855 638 3034. Again, that's 855 638 3034. The best of the Doug Stewart Show. I've been talking about Red Rice, Frogmore Stew. Another one on the list, or number 13 on this list, is Penis Taste Better Boiled. <laughs> yes, yes. And as God is my witness, as God is my witness, my wife did not know people boiled penis and ate them. She did not. My wife's from Ohio. And yes, boiled peanuts, if cooked right, are the bomb. <laughs> Sports talk. Straight, no chaser. All right, so I got to clear something up. <laughs> and, and I don't even know why anybody's mind would even work like this. But uh, evidently it's becoming a topic of conversation. In the last segment, I was talking about boiled pea nuts, okay, that come from out of the ground, not boiled pea (laughs) nuts. And so, evidently, there's some talk in the chat room about Doug talking about boiled uh, man parts. No, pea nuts. I'm trying to say it as slow as I can. Pea nuts, okay? Uh, what is it? P-E-A-N-U-T-S? P-Nuts! <laughs> no, man! Not boiled penis! Come on, man! And I see Vern in here. Damn you, Vern! Ugh. Y'all know what the hell I was saying. <laughs> this is the Ducks to a show. This is your boy, Doug Stewart, for my folks at System 5 Electronics. They're proud to offer my listeners here in the metro Atlanta area, all the way down to Macon, Georgia, the most affordable home security monitoring systems, featuring smart solutions for that busy lifestyle you lead for as low as $16.50 per month. Here's some of the reasons why you should choose System 5. Hi, I'm Maceo Brown, President and CEO of System 5 Electronics. We take pride in making sure that security is the number one thing that we do. And thanks to you, the customer that has supported us, we have grown this company in Southwest Atlanta where we're creating jobs and opportunities. Not only is their monitoring station here in Atlanta, but they also install the most advanced, up-to-date alarm systems where you can access cameras, lights, door locks, thermostats, and other devices remotely with your smartphone, 24-7 technical support, plus the lowest service call fees in the business. And check this, you own the security alarm system once it's installed, and you get direct access to the owner if you ever got a problem, Mr. Macy O'Brown. Click on the banner on the Doug Stewart Show website or app for more details, or give them a call at 404-756-0736. Again, that's 404-756-0736. 
or online at System5ElectronicsInc.com. That's System5ElectronicsInc.com. Hour number two of the Doug Stewart Show, May 21st, 2015, uh, Throwback Thursday, talking Atlanta Hawks, Cleveland Cavaliers, tonight game two of the Rockets and the, uh, the Golden State Warriors. Man, the NBA is just fantastic. I love the NBA. <laughs> it's fantastic. They should make a, a marketing campaign about being fantastic. Fantastic tonight, game two of Rockets and Warriors. Can't wait to see that. Going to see if uh, if Golden State just continues to roll. They look unbeatable. Uh, if Golden State and Cleveland were to play in the finals, um, man, that's really a coin toss because you have the X Factor in LeBron James, but you have Golden State just looking so unstoppable right now. Like I mentioned yesterday, you, Steph Curry is just butter. <laughs> I mean, he's just butter. He's unstoppable right now, the league MVP. So, uh, we're definitely going to talk about that. Uh, I want to get into this this uh, latest conversation, I guess, on Deflategate and Tom Brady, or something that I kind of observed and uh, all of the conversation going on in America about that. Now, this segment is brought to you by National Debt Relief. They're one of the country's largest and most reputable debt settlement companies specializing in debt settlement, and they've also negotiated settlements for thousands of creditors and collection accounts worldwide. Core services are debt settlement, as an alternative, I repeat, an alternative to bankruptcy, credit counseling, and debt consolidation. So it's none of that. Before you take the step in filing for bankruptcy or doing something, you know, uh, rash, uh, give my folks a call at National Debt Relief. The number is 844-828-4975. Once again, 844-828-4975. And make sure and let them know that the Doug Stewart Show Sent you. All right. All right. Um, NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell said the New England Patriots owner Robert Kraft's decision to accept the league's punishment will not affect quarterback Tom Brady's appeal of a four game suspension, adding that he's open to any new information <laughs> Brady may provide. Uh, I think that whole thing is a farce. There's a couple of things with this with this deflate gate thing. I think that whole statement is a farce. Um, you know, it's, it's been a farce from the very beginning as far as this appeal and Roger Goodell overseeing it. Because once again, as I mentioned a couple of days ago, Roger Goodell appointed a guy to do this. He appointed the guy to do this. Why would he go back in a race with the said guy that he appointed? Why would he go back and erase his ruling? All right, and his penalties and his fines. Why would he do that? that it just doesn't work right. It doesn't sound right. <laughs> you know, um, that's silly. And then another thing that I've noticed over the last couple of days, and you're listening to the Doug Stewart Show, and I, I talk about it all the time. Uh, in the morning, I have on the radio, and so I skip around. And I also have on the TV, and most of the time I have it on uh, Mike and Mike. And so listen to a lot of commentary over the last couple of dirt days, and you're listening to the Doug Stewart Show. Uh, I, I continue to hear Mike Greenberg, you know, being so strong in his stance that if Tom Brady doesn't fight this thing to the hilt, that it's going to forever damage his legacy. And, you know, whatever what happens with this appeal, he needs to to really, really uh, vehemently fight this thing in the public eye because we're talking about his legacy going forward. And uh, that he can't drop the case. And something that I think that he's missing and a lot of people are missing in the media is that, you know, Tom Brady might have to drop this thing and just forget about it and not take the step to to even going over the commissioner's head and the league's head um, and taking this thing to court. He might have to drop this thing because he may have been lying. But not that he may have been lying, that he was lying. <laughs> okay? And that he knows what he did, and he knows that if they dig deeper into this thing and that these ball guys and these equipment managers somehow come clean, that he's going to even look like a bigger jerk than he is right now and being perceived as right now. Like, they're taking for granted that Tom Brady saying that he didn't do this or he had nothing to do with Deflategate, 
they're taking for granted that he's telling the truth. Okay? Uh, that's, that could be the furthest thing from the truth in my mind. Because let's review this one more time, and we've done this a lot at nauseum. That this is kind of for the new listeners. There's a couple of things that we do know. We do know that the officials, <laughs> and it sounds really crazy that we're going back over this, but I think we need to. And you're listening to the Doug Stewart Show. We do know that the officials tested the balls and that the ball's uh, air pressure was correct. We do know that subsequently after that, the equipment managers vanished with said balls <laughs> uh, for a period of time. And that when the balls were checked later on in the game against the Indianapolis Colts, the balls did not have the proper air pressure. They were deflated. We do know that. We do know. We can take it for granted. I, I, I think you, it's not even for granted. I think that this is a fact that the balls can't deflate themselves. So what does that mean? That means that the equipment manager slash ball guys deflated said footballs. Okay? And then the other part of that is if you think that they did this on their own, if you think that the equipment managers went rogue per se and deflated these footballs without the knowledge of Tom Brady, then you are nuts. <laughs> it just doesn't work like that. So at the end of the day, bottom line is Tom Brady told these guys what to do with these footballs. He's probably 99.99% of a chance guilty. That's why he's probably not going to fight this. That's why he's probably not going to take this to the next level. He's going to give some type of political answer about, you know, he doesn't want to drag this thing out. He doesn't want to bring any more t- shame to the organization. Kind of like the same way Robert Crabb did in his explanation of not fighting the NFL about these suspensions and fines. He's going to do something like that. But he's just going to let this just kind of like go away on his own. He's not going to fight this thing. If he fights this thing, I'd be shocked. I'd be shocked. On one hand, I'd be shocked because I really believe that he's guilty. On the other side, I wouldn't be shocked, I guess, is because that's probably the thing that he has to do. So, in effect, what this is going to be is kind of like Ryan Braun saying he didn't use performance-enhancing drugs. It's going to be kind of like Lance Armstrong. Um, uh, But the great thing about Lance Armstrong is the truth actually came out. The same great thing that happened or that, that went down with Ryan Braun is that the truth actually came out. Unless you get these... Equipment managers to just spill their guts, you know, it's all innuendo. And you're listening to the Doug Stewart Show. And you got to believe that some payments have probably been made. Uh, so it's very convoluted right now. Yeah, the reason why Tom Brady, you know, may not fight this thing and may not want to go to the level of taking it to court and them having to delve deeper into his personal life and definitely getting his phone as evidence is because he's probably guilty. <laughs> And you're listening to the Doug Stewart Show. Yeah, I keep hearing, oh, well, 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 I mean, you know, uh, uh, he better fight this thing. He better fight this thing. Mm, not not, not so much. Not so much because chances are, and when I say chances, I'm just saying that just to be uh, politically correct. I remember when we first started, uh, every time we talked about a story and someone was denying something, um, they always said we had to say the word alleged in front of it. Or, 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 less, or, or, or unless we we'd be, uh, or could be sued for, for slander or some type of thing. Yeah. So chances are, let me just put that in there. Chances are, allegedly, Tom Brady probably did this. <laughs> just like the NFL and the Wells investigation said that more likely and probably and chances are, you know, just to cover themselves, I'll say the same thing. But you know good and damn well Tom Brady knew what the hell was going on. So just stop it. Just stop it. What do you mean he's going to fight this thing if he 100% believes he didn't do anything? He, he doesn't think that because he know he did it, allegedly. <laughs> he knows what the deal is, man. And you know what the deal was. All right, certain things about this case are just a matter of fact. They're matter of fact. So just stop playing. Tom Brady's reputation is forever sullied. Forever, And I know that probably hurts him more than anything else. Not that he got caught or almost got caught. It's that this golden boy image that he's had and that he's manufactured uh, for a long, long time has been forever damaged. That's probably hurt him, hurting him more so than anything else. What are your thoughts on that? What do you think is going to happen ultimately with this? 
What do you think's gonna happen? You think Brady's gonna fight this thing? Or you think he's just gonna let it just fade away into uh, uh, oblivion, like Mike Tyson said one time? What are your thoughts? Hit me on the Spreaker chat on Spreaker.com. Make sure you follow the Doug Stewart Show. If you're a company out there and you'd like to partner with the Doug Stewart Show, we love to partner with you, man. Email me at Doug at the Doug Stewart Show.com. Let's do some business, man. We got a great audience, a fantastic demo of listeners that love sports, mostly Metro Atlanta. We're doing big things, man. We're doing big, big things. Email me at Doug at the Doug Stewart Show.com. We'll promote your brand, your product, whatever that may be. To the fullest on the Doug Stewart Show. All right? Keep it locked. When we get back, all I'm going to do is read chat, baby. That's all I'm going to do from all of the Stewies. Don't go away. This is the Doug Stewart Show. First of all, thank you for listening to the Doug Stewart Show. Now, if you've been listening for a while, you know that we've grown exponentially over the first couple of months. Whether that's listens, whether that's followers, we're blowing up and you could be a part of it. If you have a company out there and you like to promote on the Doug Stewart Show, we'd love to partner with you. Here's what you do. Email me at Doug at the Doug Stewart Show.com. Once again, that's Doug at the Doug Stewart Show.com. Whether that's locally, regionally, or nationally, we can get the word out. What you're talking about is middle-aged dudes that love sports and love exciting sports talk. Once again, email me at Doug at the Doug Stewart Show.com. That's Doug at the Doug Stewart Show.com, and we will put you out there. All right? That's Doug at the Doug Stewart Show.com. Let's do some business. Yes! National Debt Relief is one of the country's largest and most reputable debt settlement companies. Made up of energetic individuals who are passionate about helping thousands of Americans with debt relief. Most importantly, we're all about helping our customers through a tough financial time in their lives with education and individual customer service. We're dedicated to helping individuals and families rid their lives of burdensome debt. Specializing in debt settlement, and they've also negotiated settlements for thousands of creditor and collection accounts. Providing clients with both expertise and proven results, this means helping customers in time of hardship to get out of debt with the least possible cost. It can also mean conducting financial consultations, educating the customer, and recommending the appropriate solution. Core Services offer debt settlement as an alternative, I repeat, alternative to bankruptcy, credit counseling, and debt consolidation. National Debt Relief is your number one advocate group to help you reestablish financial stability as quickly as possible. So give us a call at 844-828-4975. Again, that's 844 844- 828-4975 and work it out. This your boy Doug Stewart for my folks at System 5 Electronics. They're proud to offer my listeners here in the metro Atlanta area all the way down to Macon, Georgia, the most affordable home security monitoring systems featuring smart solutions for that busy lifestyle you lead for as low as $16.50 per month. Here's some of the reasons why you should choose System 5. Hi, I'm Maceo Brown, President and CEO of System 5 Electronics. We take pride in making sure that security is the number one thing that we do. And thanks to you, the customer that has supported us, we have grown this company in Southwest Atlanta where we're creating jobs and opportunities. Not only is their monitoring station here in Atlanta, but they also install the most advanced, up-to-date alarm systems where you can access cameras, lights, door locks, thermostats, and other devices remotely with your smartphone, 24-7 technical support, plus the lowest service call fees in the business. And check this, you own the security alarm system once it's installed, and you get direct access to the owner if you ever got a problem, Mr. Macy O'Brown. Click on the banner on the Doug Stewart Show website or app for more details, or give them a call at 404-756-0736. Again, that's 404-756-0736. Or online at System5ElectronicsInc.com. That's System5ElectronicsInc.com. Welcome back to the Doug Stewart Show. 
Throwback Thursday. Shouts out to everybody in the chat room. Shouts out to everybody listening to the show. Have you told your allotted one person about the Doug Stewart Show? I mean, if you haven't, shame on you. Shame on you. Need you to tell one person about the Doug Stewart Show, man. Pass the gift of the Doug Stewart Show. Um, I mean, we're different than everybody else. I mean, as far as sports and anything, really. Uh, this show is just totally, totally different. I was talking in the last segment about uh, Deflate Gate, Tom Brady, and what he's going to do or what he's not going to do. Very interesting uh, story out there. Uh, Darrell Revis, in effect, called out his old team. You know he's not with the with the Patriots anymore. He's actually back with the New York Jets. And in an interview with New York uh, Daily News, a guy named Manish Mehta, uh, your boy Darrell Rivas had this to say. They have a history of doing stuff and talking about the Patriots. You can't hide that. Tom was there when they did that stuff in the past. New England's been doing stuff in the past and getting in trouble, he continued. When stuff repeatedly happens, then that's it. I don't know what else to tell you. Stuff repeatedly happened through the years. You got Spygate. You got this and that and everything else. Obviously, in those situations in the past, they had the evidence so they did what they needed to do in talking about the NFL. So, and you know, Darrell Revis has always been a very candid guy like that. And he, he's really messy <laughs> with that type of thing. And, uh, and uh, his, uh, his statements to the press and dealing with teams and contracts and that type of thing. So he's always been that type of person. But at the same time, he's a keep it real type of person. Even though he played on the Patriots, won a Super Bowl with the Patriots last year. I mean, that's the sentiment from a lot of players, from most players, is that we're not stupid. <laughs> all right? I'm going to keep it real. All right? You may not understand how it works, but these are guys. I mean, Darrell Revis is a, is a perennial pro bowler. Uh, chances are he'll be a Hall of Famer. And he's very critical of Tom Brady and the Patriots, and he actually played for them. What more do you need to know about this story? I mean, simple, and I've been saying this from the very beginning, people aren't stupid. I mean, for the most part, people aren't stupid. The only people that are that are lightweight trying to let this fly are the Puppet Factory, the media, but the Puppet Factory in general, which is ESPN for a lot of new listeners that don't know that terminology, is the Puppet Factory and Patriots supporters, Patriots fans, you know, and people from New England, from Foxborough. Those are the only two groups, all right, that are in effect pining uh, opining for the New England Patriots. Everybody else with half a damn brain is like, come on, dude, we know what happened. Of course we know what happened. And it's tremendously hurt Tom Brady's legacy. A lot of the things that happened before, you could pin it on the organization. You could even pin it on Belichick. Um, nothing really directly you could pin on Tom Brady. So his image stayed crystal clean, you know, throughout all of the things that have happened in the past. Not with this. The bullseye is directly on his ass on this situation. 404-382-0338. You can also email me at Doug at thedougstewartshow.com. From dollars and cents in the uh, Spreaker chat, they got to pay Tristan Thompson big money now. Uh, think Love was signed for one year and then look to reestablish himself and bolt to the Lakers. That might be a scenario. Tristan Thompson has been playing fantastic basketball uh, throughout these playoffs. He is making that money. From Fred Mack, ATL. Still have hope. JR will probably go for three for 17 for the next game. He going to shoot it, Shawty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that very well could be the case that J.R. Smith doesn't have another game like that in this entire series. So, yeah, I'm not, once again, I'm not saying that it's all is lost. Um, but it just doesn't look good after what I saw last night. From Redland Kirk, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. The Hawks got punched in the mouth last night. That ninja, J-Rob, I'm not a fan. If you give a player a call and blow whistles off the ball to change the flow, that is cheating. Y'all are just used to it and accept it. I'm not built that way. Uh, I guess I'm talking about some of the calls last night in the game. Max Jones the third. Cavs don't have an answer for T. He was breaking everybody's ankles last night. Boy, it was nice, but that was the first half. But in the last five, six minutes of the game, he couldn't hit the backside of a barn. He couldn't throw a ball in the ocean. I don't know what was going on with Jeff T last night. It was very strange from Jam 2. Until the Hawks do right by Neek. <laughs> what do you mean until they do right by Neek? The Mojo will always still be on them. They've tried to do right by Dominique. The man's got his own damn statue in front of the building. 
He's been getting a check from the Atlanta Hawks organization uh, in effect for as long as I can remember, ever since he left the NBA. Uh, what do you mean? Now, now, if you're talking about Mojo and how they stole the famous Mojo's tickets after they left the Omni and went to Phillips Arena, that's a different story. KC, LeBron James equals a $6 million man. Better, stronger, faster. I mentioned that earlier. Like, it really just hit me last night. And all of the fanfare and all of the, you know, we want the Hawks to shock the world. <laughs> uh, they ultimately had to play against LeBron James. And it took me, you know, a couple of, of minutes into the game to figure this out, that this is real. Texas tied. LeBron is the best player in the league. This is what happens. Detroit Matt, the Hawks are just outmatched. Mocha Bella. Y'all know King James want that championship back to Cleveland. Nine on the Rhino. LeBron was okay. JR was the reason the Cavs won. Uh, I don't know about that. LeBron c- controls the flow of everything, though, man. I mean, there's, 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 there's not a lot of players that I can think of, and probably the obvious one, that makes everybody around them better. Like, I'm not willing to say LeBron's better or I would take LeBron James before I took Michael Jordan, but I think that you can really make the article, the, the, the argument, that LeBron makes his teammates better, more so than maybe even Michael Jordan did. I mean, you feel me on that? Or is that is that just blasphemy? I don't think so. <laughs> LeBron has done a lot with little in relative terms. If you talk about what he did with the Cleveland Cavaliers on his first go-around, and even looking at this team now, I mean, they don't have Kevin Love. Kyrie Irving is half the player he's been this year. When he had all those 50-point games this year, that's not the guy out there playing for Cleveland right now. You've got some solid pieces. Uh, Timothy Mozgov and J.R. Smith and those guys and Shumford and those guys. But Shumford's really a defensive player. J.R. Smith is a streaky player. They aren't like Scottie Pippen and nobody like that. Uh, Tony Kukoc, they aren't. They're good players. LeBron makes people better, man. I mean, there's no other way to say it. And you're listening to the Doug Stewart Show from Fell Pay. Either way, the true healthy team left in the playoffs is Golden State. ATL is missing Carroll and Tybo. Cleveland is missing Love and Urban is hurt. Houston is missing Beverly. Nobody stands a chance against Golden State. That's a very prophetic statement because you're exactly right. Out of every team that's left right now, Golden State is the healthiest. Knock on wood for them. Uh, Everybody else is dealing with issues, as just mentioned just now by my man, Fell Pay. From Sluggo, newsflash, if you're one of the many key keying over the Hawks losing game one and possibly going fishing, yet your team couldn't even get out of the bait shop before being caught up in fishing line. Go sit your ass down over there somewhere. Not now, but right now. And uh, I hear you. I hear you, Sluggo. From Montana Jones, anybody think that the Hawks will win? I got a unicorn for them to sell. Oh, it's not over. It doesn't look good. (laughs) It definitely doesn't look good. And it's only one game. This is a best out of seven series. I got to keep reminding myself and you of that. But... (laughs) <laughs> it don't look good for the home team. Gerald, the Hawks rope-a-doping the Cavs. Laugh out loud. I hope so. Cali Boy J, don't forget the Cavs have Larry Drew and Tyron Lue coaching. They know the Hawks. That's a major advantage. That's a good point. Uh, but overall, coaching, I'm going to give to to Coach Budenholzer over David Blatt. I mean, not even close. Both first-year coaches, or no, this isn't Bowden Holes, uh Coach Bud's first year. He's been here a couple of years with the Atlanta Hawks. I think this is his second year. This is David Blatt's first year coaching in the NBA. Uh, you've seen some of the boneheaded mistakes that he's made this year. I don't think the players in that team really respect him. Um, coach Bud's the coach of the year. Definitely a check mark goes to the Atlanta Hawks as far as coaching. There's not even a question about that. All right, when we get back from the break, man, all I'm going to do is read more chat. A ton of it. A ton of thoughts, reactions from last night's game one of the Eastern Conference Finals. So we'll read some of your chat and keep it going on the realest, trealest sports talk show in America, the Doug Stewart Show. Don't go away. Fantasy sports fans are winning huge cash prizes every day at DraftKings.com. America's favorite place to play daily fantasy sports. Daily fantasy means no season-long commitments. Play whenever you want. Just pick your sport and draft your team. It's like a new season every time you play. 
So you're never stuck with the same players. Last year, $300 million were won at DraftKings.com, and you could be next to win big. Go to DraftKings.com now and enter promo code STU to play for free. That's STU for free entry now at DraftKings.com. Also, if you use promo code STU, DraftKings will match your initial deposit up to $600. Deposit $600, play with $1,200. DraftKings.com, promo code STU. The Doug Stewart Stewart Show. The place where the real players play. We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service. The The Doug Stewart Stewart Show. Show. That's a brand name. Like Pepsi, that's a brand name. I stand behind it. I guarantee it. The The Doug Doug Stewart Show. If you ain't stewing, what the hell are you doing? What is 911 Tax Relief? It's a tax relief company that can help you reduce or remove your IRS or state tax debt. They'll help stop bank levies and wage garnishments by implementing offers and compromise or penalty abatements. 911 Tax Relief is a tax relief company, but they're different from the others. Their experts are licensed and role tax agents, and they also have more than 12 years' experience helping people solve their tax problems. They're a tax relief company that understands how the IRS works, and they'll also put that knowledge to work for you. So, they can get you the best possible settlement or solution to your tax problems. Highly rated by the Better Business Bureau, and they've helped thousands of people solve their tax problems. So, don't play around. Click on their link on my website and let 911 Tax Relief help you in your situation with Uncle Sam. In a constant battle against weak ass sports talk, this is the Doug Stewart Show. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I dub new. Boy, David Letterman went out last night with a bang. Uh, fantastic career, man. Shouts out to David Letterman. 33 years. You know, that's always a strange thing to me, and, and we always want to have our jobs forever. But I always think about when I hear somebody's been at a job, especially like, like uh, David Letterman, can you imagine the energy that you have to have every night. You're on national TV. It's not like radio. I think radio's uh, much easier and much natural because, you know, we aren't in front of a camera. There's a lot more that goes into, you know, doing TV than doing radio. There's a lot more that goes into it. Trust me. Um, But can you imagine getting, you know, your spirit up to be good, to be funny, and 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 to hit all your cues? For 33 straight years, I always think about whenever we go to Vegas and we go see George Wallace or who's the guy uh, that, that, that Carlton from Fresh Prince used to sing after. You know what I'm talking about. And they, they consistently, night after night after night after week after week after month after year after year, they have to get up to do their live show in, in Vegas. And it's just incredible to me. It's incredible to me how uh, that you can do that, man, and be so good at it for so, so long. <laughs> I mean, uh, shots out to David Letterman. 33 years. Nighttime TV. Wow. Ball award to him. Uh, we've been talking about the NBA playoffs, talking about Steph Curry's daughter, <laughs> talking about uh, Brian Windhorst going off, Darrell Revis, a lot of stuff we've been getting into, and obviously uh, about last night's big game in the Eastern Conference Finals uh, with the Cleveland Cavaliers roll on. They look they look very good last night. And this team isn't even all put together. They've got a lot of issues with injuries. We've been talking about them all day long today. And LeBron James is just that dude. I mean, they just rolled over the Hawks last night. The score was closer than really what happened, in my opinion. I mean, Cleveland controlled this game from the start to the very, very finish. Uh, Hawks made a great run at the very end, but then they just could not buy a basket. They really needed Corver or Teague to make a three-pointer at the end there uh, to really get back in the conversation to trying to win that game. And every time they needed to make a three, it was Brick City. <laughs> it was like Jersey. It was Brick City last night in the last four or five minutes of that game. So, uh 
Uh, tough, tough loss for the Hawks last night. Let me read more of your chat, man. Thank you so much for the chat. I really do appreciate it. From Brian Lucas. He says, I agree with Winhorse. Be a father to your child, but press conference is your job. Doug, do you put your girls on air? Once again, let me say this. I understand the point that they're trying to make. I just think that you are being an a-hole when you actually come out in public and on the record and say it. Not only that, um, a normal job, and when I talk, and my job isn't a normal job, I can put my daughter on the air right now. You understand? So that's not a good example. I think what you're talking about, when you're talking about a traditional job, a 9 to 5, in comparison to what NBA players do in playing a professional sport, it's apples and oranges. It's not the same thing. They're entertainment, <laughs> okay? You're 9 to 5, you're in the office, you're in a cubicle or whatever. Your, your drive description is totally different, and the professionalism is totally different from what NBA players do. In effect, it's entertainment. I don't think it's nothing that big with it. And, and the problem I got with it is that you find so many ways to bash these guys, and when they're being loving fathers in open, out in the open, and it's a problem. It's just very contradictory to me, man. Miss Mocabella, what would Winhorse say if King James had his daughter doing that? <laughs> he wouldn't have said nothing. And that's a perfect, uh, perfect point. You're, you're exactly right. I mean, in effect, Brian Winhorse has rolled LeBron James raw for the last eight years. <laughs> He's rolled that ninja raw, bareback. Yeah, he wouldn't say anything. Anything uh, negative towards LeBron James's kids, there's no way possible. Uh, Gary Joyner, middle finger to Winhorse, Sluggo. Winhorse is literally clocking six figures, riding that man. <laughs> exactly what I just said from Gerald. Winhorse is the Joey Crawford of the media. Jungle Brother, this is why Marshawn Lynch and Barry Bonds say F the media. It's exactly why. It's exactly why. Uh, you damned if you do, you damned if you don't. J. Rob, just not Windhorse saying that. A lot of people in the Puppet Factory saying the same thing. Oh, yeah, because they're all on the same page, you know. Uh, once again, they create the narrative, and you're listening to the Doug Stewart Show. So a lot of people up there do have, you know, like-minded thoughts. <laughs> they do. That is why I call it the Puppet Factory. Uh, when people get up there, when people get up there, a lot of people I've seen up there, not everybody, a lot of people that I've seen go up there, they just automatically take the company stance. They just magically just take the company stance. Whatever that narrative is that subliminally they're talking about in meetings <laughs> and throughout the hallways up there. And trust me, I know. I roamed those hallways for over five years. Um, it's kind of like osmosis. Everybody just has the same opinion. And if you don't have the same opinion up there, then a lot of times they frown upon you. And a lot of times you find yourself out the door like the stews. Wait, 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 wait. I'm okay with that. <laughs> I'm fine. We're blessed. We're blessed. I, I, I didn't mean to act like I was mad or anything like that. From uh, Max Jones III, BPA for Brian Windhorse. Write it down, Doug. Yes, I did write it down. These are a little bit older in the chat. From Gary Joyner. It's good to see us black men be fathers. Yeah. Yeah, America to a large degree is always very critical of black men. <laughs> And it's just ironic, it's hypocritical that you're mad at this guy for sharing a special moment with his kid. That's not a rule against it. Why would you be mad against it? Because you're trying to reach your deadline? Get the F out of here. The 47th problem. Let Curry spank his daughter behind the scenes and it will be front page news. I mean, you guys are just doing great work today on this chat. That's a great point. Let him whip that same little girl and see what happens. <laughs> Let's see what happens then. Oh, uh, the 47th problem. Curry's daughter was adorable. One of the best moments of the post game. Brian Winhorse should choke himself out. <laughs> I don't know how you choke yourself out, but I mean, that'd be cool if he tried to do that. Miss Mocha Bell, I don't think Winhorse has any kids nor Skip Bayless. GTFOH. I'm not sure about him. I know Skip doesn't have any damn kids. Uh, Max Jones III, the media should have that kind of power to shape players' personalities. They are exactly that jungle. Uh, look how much media shapes society. Instead of people standing up, some people need to wake up. 
Texas tie. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. Right, Doug? Just take care of yourself, God, and family. Lamont Hart. Allen Iverson started the bringing the kids to the press conference. Huh. And you're listening to the Doug Stewart Show. I'm trying to think. I mean, you know, I love AI. AI is one of my favorite athletes of all times. I like Rebels, you know. I like your Allen Iversons. I like the Barry Bonds. I love the guys that say, you know, F uh, City Hall. Uh, you might have seen that or noticed a uh, a theme with the guys that I like and I talk about and I try to back. Um, I can't think of anybody before Allen Iverson, now that you bring his name up, that, that brought their kids to the press conference. And I do remember AI doing that all the time. And that was a good thing. I mean, the, the contrast of Allen Iverson was, what, we talking about practice and – the, the quote-unquote negative stereotype that a lot of people had for Allen Iverson because of his background, uh, the controversy when he went to jail or almost went to jail in high school, the corn rolls. I love everything about Allen Iverson. I do. And uh, I still haven't seen that Showtime special on him. Uh, I've got that plan to watch that. But, yeah, in all of the negative conversation about Allen Iverson, he was one of the first people, and he may be the first person I can remember now that my boy Lamont Hart says it, that started bringing his kids out to the press conferences, uh, the post-game press conferences. And also, Allen Iverson, (laughs) once again, strange dichotomy. Once again, Allen Iverson is the person who I think David Stern and the NBA were purposely targeting when they came up with that mandatory dress code. You notice that dress code thing ain't even talked about anymore? That was all about Allen Iverson. Now, he used to come out <laughs> with urban gear to the hilt. He did. And, I mean, I even can remember Allen Iverson maybe doing a press conference with his darn do-rag on or something like that. I don't know if he took it that far. I can't remember. But he used to be urban dressed down to the gear. That's the best way to put it. And the NBA and David Stern came up with this cockamamie rule about wearing a jacket or a tie or whatever. And subsequently, if you notice now, ain't nobody wearing no suit ju- jackets or no ties to no press conference anymore. That was all because of Allen Iverson. When Allen Iverson went away, that whole talk, that whole rule thing went away. Tim Duncan comes out there lots of times and like cut off t-shirts. Nobody doesn't say a damn word. That was blatant. That was blatant against AI. <laughs> and the man might have had some endorsements through those companies or whatever. FUBU. Uh, Fat Farm, I don't know. And they stopped the man from coming out there in his fresh gear. I hated that. I hated that. So they made a rule about him and how he could dress. And then at the same time, I think Allen Iverson has a lot of heart and has always had a lot of heart uh, that's not talked about. He used to bring his kids out there, man, to share the moment. And football players do it all the time. After the Super Bowl, you always see – Uh, The players in the game have their kids on the field with them. What's the difference? Just stop it, man. Just looking for something to say. (laughs) Like my grandmother used to say, you just looking for something to say. Just shut up. Just just sit your ass down somewhere and shut up. Uh, You mean uh, they shouldn't be able to bring the kids out there. Now, if they come up with some type of rule saying that, and there's something, you know, based on the collective bargaining agreement and uh, the players can't do it, that's fine. Bottom line is, I just don't think you should come out of your mouth saying anything that could be mm, understood as negative towards a kid. That's like bullying. (laughs) And this climate, this atmosphere, and talking about this whole bullying uh, story and conversation in this country. And and Brian Windhorse is, in effect, bullying this man's kids. I mean, I, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. I think that's... That's just bad. I mean, he might even win the damn BPA right now. Let me look at this list. Hold on a second. Let me look at this list. So right now, we've got Vern nominated uh, for calling up here yesterday, trying to uh, say something crazy. I had to shoot his ass a couple times. He called back. He's like, Jason. So Vern's nominated. Tree's nominated. I don't know why Tree keeps getting nominated. He just always trying to correct me. Stand down just a little bit. Then we got James Harden. Ooh, this is a strong contender. Uh, paid a hundred grand for some Nutsi. I mean, who does that? And then Brian Windhorse. All right, I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do anything unprecedented and give Brian Windhorse the BPA right now. But let's just say 
that he's a strong favorite to win this week. I mean, a strong favorite. Get out of here with that BS. Every time you talk about athletes, every chance y'all get, y'all try to throw them under the bus. You know, you talk about Plaxico shooting himself in the leg. You talk about Tybo Cephalosha getting in the fight in a nightclub. And a man brings his little cute little daughter out to share a special moment and y'all mad? Get out of here with that. Don't go away, the Doug Stewart Show. System 5 Electronics is proud to offer my listeners in the Atlanta area the most affordable home security monitoring systems. Featuring smart solutions for your busy lifestyle for as low as $16.50 per month. Here's just a few reasons to choose System 5. Not only is their monitoring station located here in Atlanta, but they also install the most advanced, up-to-date alarm systems where you can access cameras, lights, door locks, thermostats, and other devices remotely with your smartphone. 24-7 technical support plus the lowest service call fees in the business. And check this. You own your security alarm system once it's installed. Not only have they been around for almost 25 years, but their customer service is excellent. And you get direct access to the owner, Mr. Macy O'Brown, to resolve any issues with your alarm system. Click on the banner on the Doug Stewart Show website or app for more details, or give them a call at 404-756-0736. Again, that's 404-756-0736. And make sure and tell them the Doug Stewart Show sent you. Yes! At Ticket Liquidator, we believe you should have access to the experiences you want to be a part of. Since 2003, Ticket Liquidator has been connecting buyers and sellers with the most sought-after and often sold-out events across the country. Ticket Liquidator's nationwide network gives you access to one of the largest online inventories of sports, theater, and concert tickets, with prices lower than most companies in other markets. And our security policies are solid, so you can buy with absolute confidence. More tickets, better service, and lower prices, so you can witness the best entertainment, culture, and sports events worldwide. At Ticket Liquidator, we know that seeing a legend bring down the house or watching your team win the championship is about more than a ticket. It's about being there. For all your sports and entertainment ticket needs, call us at 855-638-3034. Again, that's 855-638-3034. National Debt Relief is one of the country's largest and most reputable debt settlement companies. Made up of energetic individuals who are passionate about helping thousands of Americans with debt relief. Most importantly, we're all about helping our customers through a tough financial time in their lives with education and individual customer service. We're dedicated to helping individuals and families rid their lives of burdensome debt. Specializing in debt settlement, and they've also negotiated settlements for thousands of creditor and collection accounts. Providing clients with both expertise and proven results, this means helping customers in time of hardship to get out of debt with the least possible cost. It can also mean conducting financial consultations, educating the customer, and recommending the appropriate solution. Core services offer debt settlement as an alternative. I repeat, alternative to bankruptcy, credit counseling, and debt consolidation. National Debt Relief is your number one advocate group to help you reestablish financial stability as quickly as possible. So give us a call at 844 844- 828-4975. Again, that's 844-828-4975. And work it out. Right about man. I want to rock. Do you want to rock? This is the Doug Stewart Show. We rock every day here Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Pass the word. And, uh, man, don't forget, don't forget, I mean, we got big aspirations here at the Doug Stewart Show. You can always donate to the Doug Stewart Show by going to thedougstewartshow.com and clicking on the little donate button to the right, man. And if you donate 20 bucks or more, we will send you the official first run shirt, T-shirt of the Doug Stewart Show. So that's thedougstewartshow.com. 
click on the donate button. 20 bucks or more, we send you a T-shirt. If you send less than that, we thank you. We, we greatly thank you, and we'll try to send you something uh, as well for that. But a T-shirt, you get a T-shirt with a $20 donation or more. All right, 404-382-0338. You still got time to call in if you'd like. Uh, I've been reading chat, talking about all these little stories um, going on in the world of sports, doing what we do here every single day, Monday through Friday. Having a good time? Are you not entertained? Huh? You know you are. You know you are. Um, great chat today, man. Great conversation in the chat room on Spreaker.com. I really appreciate that. From Scotty, boys, the men will be performing end of the road at the game or two for the Atlanta Hawks. Don't say that. Don't say that. Are they really? I read something about boys, the men performing. Um, and maybe they are performing for the Atlanta Hawks, and I think you're trying to be funny talking about end of the road at game two. Um, the great boys, the men, they've been around a long time. Why don't they uh, – what happened to the tall, skinny guy? Tree, jump on for a second, and you're listening to the Doug Stewart Show. I saw the promo picture, and it's just the three dudes, and it's not the tall dude that had the bass voice. What happened to him? Someone was sick or some. one of them was sick. Yeah, I think, I, I think maybe he was. Um, but don't you think that – because I've seen it for many, many years. They don't have that fourth member, that tall dude. Don't you think no. that they're established enough and they're um, got a good enough? It's the tall enough... one. It's, it's it the one with the one. deep voice. He's gone. Yeah, he's the tall one. Oh, I thought you were talking about that skinny, dark skinned guy. No, no. The other dude is the taller. Yeah, he's But the dude that used to walk sick. around with the cane. Yeah, yeah that, he's that guy. not well. Yeah. Um, shouldn't they get a fourth <laughs> member? Uh, you know, to 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 add that that role back to the group. I mean, that's what old school groups do. They somebody dies, somebody goes off and joins another group or whatever. They add another member. Shouldn't they add another member? It no, don't look right with three, three guys. They don't need no more parts. Beyonce, Destiny's Child had four members, and then they went down to three. Mm -hmm. They they're good. They got all the parts: the alto, the falsetto, and the tenor. They are good. You don't need the bass then, huh? That bass is, we're talking about this uh, in choir rehearsal. Like, no one even uses bass too much anymore. Tenor is the is the thing. Okay. So they have a falsetto, which is a would be a soprano if it was a girl, and they got an alto. Mm -hmm. They're good. Okay. They're still touring and doing what they do. They are? You think boys have been making money? I mean, I'm sure they are. Now, I'm sure they are. Know, I'm sure they are. Probably get them for about five. <laughs> what five? Uh, five grand. Oh, okay. Um, from Grego Brady making deals with them equipment guys, which includes Giselle's sisters, not to talk. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Hey guys, uh, come by my uh, my house a little bit later, and the equipment manager. And, and the ball boy walk in, and Giselle's sister's there, like in some bathing suits um, with some champagne. Sluggle. They said the ball's naturally deflated. Man, hush. That's another thing. <laughs> so I told you earlier, I had, uh, I had, uh, uh, what's the name of the show? Mike and Mike on this morning, and Michael Smith is on there. So Michael Smith is on there, and uh, Jamel Hill is on there. And they're, in effect, they're kind of slanted. Once again, it's the, it's the Puppet Factory narrative. They're kind of slanted to, to wanting to believe Tom Brady is telling the truth. And so part of this Wells report and part of the rebuttal to the Wells report <laughs> is this whole science part of it. And don't you know that these ninjas this morning, <laughs> these ninjas this morning, was paying some type of credence to that about the balls deflating themselves. And I'm sitting there on the computer, and I'm saying to myself, really, dude? Really? Y'all trying to uh, give a green light to this whole explanation about the balls deflating themselves in science? Y'all better than that, man. But I guess not. I guess technically they aren't. Um, from... Uh, Grego and G Goodell, equipment guys, all keep their jobs. Yeah. J. Rob, there's going to be a subtle statement of the balls were deflated to how Brady liked, but wasn't measured specifically for the PSI. 
Therefore, they get out of the formal term of knowingly cheating, just like Bonds. I, I can see that happen. It's going to be some type of slick way they word it you know, what they say, whereas we move on. Uh, his penalty is probably reduced a little bit, and his legacy kind of gets uh, a little bit of traction back to it. You know, it's going to be something very political and very slick the way that, it's, that, it, that, it, that it ends up. And then we're just going to move on. Watch. We're just going to move on. The puppet factory is just going to magically one day just move on. And then there will probably not be any more talk about it. You know how whenever you bring up Barry Bonds, they always want to bring up steroids. And whenever they bring up any player or athlete that they don't like, the media I'm talking about in general, and you're listening to the Doug Stewart Show, then it could be five, ten years down the road. That negative thing that happened 10 years ago, they're going to bring it up. Watch what happens with this, in particular with the Puppet Factory. Once they move on from it, five years down the road, they'll never bring it up again when they talk about Tom Brady. You watch. You watch. It's a very political thing. From uh, Grego, Michael Smith said, the coach equipment guy checked the balls before the official, so you got to throw it out. The kicking it with Kissy show. Although the Hawks' rebounding and defense was bad yesterday, we also missed a lot of our shots, not due to our good defense. Yeah, this isn't the Atlanta Hawks from the first half of the year, and I think I mentioned that yesterday. They just seem out of sorts based on the way they were playing basketball at the start of the season. At the start of the year, they were on fire. They had that month where they didn't lose a game. I think they lost maybe one game, maybe two games, maybe the month of January or February. They haven't played like that in a long, long time. And they just got to they gotta get their mojo back. And they got to get it back fast. <laughs> they got to get it back real, real fast, or this might get ugly um, real quick. This, this might get real ugly real quick. Um, and I think they can do it. I think they still got uh, a shot. I mean, everybody's got a puncher's chance, and you're listening to the Ducks Stewart Show. This thing is not over. Now, I know I came on today kind of sounding like uh, defeated and that the Hawks were defeated and this is a wrap. I didn't mean for it to come across like that. It really just hit me that the Cavaliers and LeBron James in particular are pretty good. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, and that's an understatement. And uh, last night, man, I just think they control the game. It's going to be real tough for the Hawks to, uh, to win this series. Yep, 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 yep. Remember those little Muppets on Sesame Street? Yeah, yep, 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 yep. Thank you so much for joining me today on the Doug Stewart Show. ATL ho. ATL ho. Yeah, whatever, whatever. Hey, man, thank you so much for joining me today, man. Shouts out to everybody in the chat room. Shouts out to all of the Stewies. I really appreciate it. Shouts out to the Tree of Life, my producer, for all that she does. Thank you, Tree. Waterhead, Walter, I appreciate the love. Thank you very much for all of your hard work. Dwayne Vassan, Gerald Oliveri, thank you, thank you, thank you. I not knew. My daughter's graduating high school tonight, man. Praise God. Praise God. We'll do it again tomorrow. Same Doug Stewart time, same Doug Stewart channel. Peace.